And it is recording and you should see something coming up. All right. Good. Yes, it's recording and I move over to share my screen. And hopefully that should work as well. Now the big question is, can you see my screen? Wonderful. And let's keep everything crossable crossed, even if it looks stupid, that uh, Teams is behaving itself. So that would be really, really good. Excellent. Wonderful. And I think I probably will uh, mention it uh, again, but I think Bernardo has already posted the link to the Moodle attendance. Thank you very much, Bernardo. Done it again. You are a star. And Mohammed has done that as well. Thank you. That's brilliant. So there is no excuse for people not to record their attendance. Wonderful. And somebody is going through their notes. I'm quite busy. That sounds good. So, yes. Right. And you are all aware of the test that um, is currently open. I've opened it early uh, just to make a life a little bit easier for you. So, if you haven't done so, please, please, please submit because the program will close, I think, on Tuesday, 5 p.m. How long does it take on average? Uh, I don't know. Uh, the last time I have done it, it was I did it in 15 minutes, but that's that's the danger of average. And the test is for BI 308, and I believe you have received an email, uh, but I can send out uh, later today a reminder of the link, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And hopefully all the information is uh, on the website. You can also find the link to the test on Moodle on BI 308. There is uh, a new theme there that I set up uh, which says assessments. But as I said, I will send out a reminder uh, later today. It's on what we have done up until week nine. Thank you very much, Edith. That's brilliant. That saves me a job. And I assume those people who have done the test will tell you that it's not too uh, challenging. Is it is it very difficult or is it too easy? Too difficult, too easy. It's not too bad, Daria says. Good. I'm very pleased to hear that.
Never too easy. Oh, oh yes. I don't look. I I I don't want to uh, uh, insult your intelligence. And if there are any links on the checklist that don't work, uh, please let me know. Send me an email if there are any links that don't work. Uh, sometimes this happens, and I apologize for that. OK, so let's get started uh, with uh, a little bit more uh, kinetics today. And I know you absolutely love it. You probably love it as much as you are going to love thermodynamics, uh, which is going to happen to you soon. Um, so um, when was that last week? Was it last week? Yes, last week. I showed you that we can write for a reaction. Let's say we have a reaction A. And we can write this reaction. Um, and we can write the speed, the rate of this reaction as a change in the concentration of A divided by a change in time. And if we are looking from the perspective of the reactant, it will disappear. So therefore we can write the general rate law as negative K times the concentration of A to the power of M. We said this is the rate constant. And this is the rate order of the reaction. And the whole thing together here, this gives us the general rate law or general rate equation uh, with which uh, we, you, we, we can describe this reaction. And the reason why we use this lowercase d, it indicates that the changes are absolutely minute. The, 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 the differences between the changes uh, are, you know, almost uh, zero. And that is why we are using these little d's and not the capital delta uh, for this reaction. And it, we will see in the session today that there is another reason why we write it like that. I showed you that uh, we can easily find the rate order uh, if we just simply say we are looking at the rate, which is this guy here, and we don't care so much about the negative sign, we just write this as rate equals k times concentration of a to the power of m. And in order to find the rate order, we take both sides the logarithm of so we get log rate, and you can do that with logarithm to any base. You don't have to do it to the base 10, although this is mostly uh, the, the common one. So log rate equals m times log concentration of A plus log k. So that would be. Uh, that would be the uh, case how we can then, and that is the equation for uh, a straight line. Let's see, and that is when we are looking at a very uh, simple reaction. So we can actually, from different rates, we can. Uh, to a graphical uh, solution. So here we plot log concentration of A. 
Here we plot log rate. And what we get is something like that, a straight line. This point here would be log of the rate constant and the gradient here that would be our m. And with that, we can easily determine the rate order. When is this going to be on Moodle? Uh, it is on Moodle. Uh, it is under the recordings. So you can find it always there under Kent Player. OK, so and please, can you mute, mute yourself if you are unmuted? Right, so we uh, know how to find M. We know how to find the uh, rate constant here. This is just the y-intercept of uh, this line. But please note, we are working with a log axis here and a log axis here. And only then it will give you uh, a rate, uh, will give you a straight line. OK, so that's what we've done last week. Now, today I want to do with you some uh, special rate orders that you will come across uh, very frequently when we are talking about reactions. And uh, these reactions happen all the time in every single cell at uh, every millisecond, if you like. And next term in the BI301 module, we are going to look at these things in more detail. And the uh, reason why we don't use the reaction that you suggested it is, is just simply because in this case, uh, we would have a more complex reaction because you, uh, what you describe here is you have two reactants, a reactant A and a reactant B, but fear not, we are going to discuss that next week. And uh, what you actually uh, do in order to get this graph is you would usually have the concentration of uh, something and the rate. So you would have data like that. And in order to find this, you would have to calculate log A and you calculate log rate. And from this, you will then uh, draw the graph and get your rate order. OK, so today I want to discuss two special reactions with you, which are very, very common. And in order to introduce them, um, I want to do a little sort of, it's not an experiment really, but I want to tell you about my rows. Uh, because at the moment, uh, people are aware it's uh, assessment period. So at the moment, I have assessments to mark. Uh, let's say I've got 100 assessments to mark, and I write it like that. It's a pile of uh, papers. And let's say I can mark 10 assessments per hour. Okay. Let's say I start at 9 a.m. So I start my marking and I want to know how many, how many assessments left. How many assessments left when I have my lunch at, say, 1300 hours. So how many assessments have I got left 
at lunch. I start with 100 assessments and I can do 10 assessments per hour. Aha. 60. You are absolutely right at 1300. There are 60 assessments left. Absolutely right. No, 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 that, wasn't, that wasn't too taxing, was it? That was straightforward. Actually, of course you did it. It's a very simple example. But here comes the tricky bit. How did you do it? How did you find that there are 60 assessments left? Because we can use the way you are calculating that to come up with a more general equation for that, for this problem. How did you find the 60? How did you get the answer? What did you do? Very briefly describe how you did it. Mm -hmm. Aha! Yes, yes, absolutely. There are some really good answers. So what you did in the first place is you worked out the time difference. So what you did was you calculated the final time, let's call it the end time or the final time minus the start time. And I write it like that, T final minus t, let's call it initial. So that was 1300 minus 900. So that gives me four hours, okay? And then you said, okay, I multiply this time difference. So I multiply t final, minus t initial, I multiply that by my, by this 10 assessments per hour. And I take this and subtract it from my initial value which was the 100. So here I get four hours, four times 10 assessments per hour, which gives me 40 assessments that I've marked. So 100 minus 40 gives me my 60 assessments that I still have to do. Does that make sense? So that is actually what people did in their heads, uh, sort of spelled out step by step. So I can even write my the number of assessments, the final number of assessments that I have left equals the number, the initial number, minus, and this 10 assessments per hour, this was actually, this is what I've given you here. This would be our rate constant 
times t final minus t initial. So I just have written it out again, how you did it, but just with some symbols. And Reynolds, uh, exactly, put it down here again uh, with the numbers. So this is how we calculated it. And this is actually something that I want you to remember this equation. equation. Because that's very useful. And I think we are going to have a lovely feedback. It's going to be very loud in a minute. So it would be great if you could mute yourself, whoever this is. Ah, yeah, thank you. Good. That was remix, yeah. <laughs> was a good one. Okay, so that is a, a nice equation. We could actually, if you think about it, we could almost um, we could almost solve this equation graphically, if you like. Because, let me write this in a slightly different form. I write it as a final, and I'm too lazy to write final, equals minus k times t. If we just simply say that t initial, that's, we set this as zero, because we are not really interested in what hour it is. We are interested in what is the time, actually, the time difference minus k plus a initial. So I've just rewritten this equation. So we've got y equals mx plus c. So in this case, I can actually draw a nice graph On the x-axis, I plot time. And on the y-axis, I plot the number of assessments. So let's say I start with 100. And that would be here at 9 o'clock. And Let's see that I get this nicely done at 300. I would get something like that. That should be a straight line. Ah, yeah, good. I got a straight line. Let's, let's try. Ah, got the, got the wrong one. Got a straight line like that. So this here is my initial starting point. That's the 100 assessments. This here is the gradient. And since it goes down, it's negative. And the gradient for that, if I plot it like that, the gradient equals the I should say because it goes down is negative, and that is the rate constant. Does that make sense if I plot it like that? Good. Everybody's in agreement. Of course, I can extend this line, and I can try to figure out how long would it take me to get all the assessments done. So I can extend this line up to here. So, and it's not terribly difficult. It would be 10 hours that uh, I would need to get all these 100 assessments sorted. 
So, so that would be uh, 1900 hours if I don't uh, have any breaks. And the A in this case would stand for the concentration or in, in the generic equation, it would stand for the number of assessments. It would stand, it could stand for the concentration of uh, a reactant or something like that. Right, so that was pretty easy to calculate. And that was our first rate order. And um, the way we can actually write this in a more general um, um, format, we can write this, if we look at the disappearance of the assessments, we can write this with the general rate law, dA over dt, equals minus k times d wait i need to write it nice minus k times a to the power of m and that was our rate law that's the general rate law and in this case this is the rate again in this case, in this particular case, m equals zero. This is also called a zero order reaction. So what happens, let's, let, let's think about it. What happens if M equals zero? Our rate equals minus K times, what is any number to the power of zero? It's one. Absolutely, it's one. Minus k times one. Absolutely right. So our rate here is nothing else but one times this constant. And Reynolds exactly put it down. dA over dt equals minus k, and in a way we can even ignore this times zero, but we know that this, that this uh, times one, that this times one comes from a to the power of zero. So in this case, for a zero order reaction, the rate equals minus k. And the rate is constant because K, the rate constant is, uh, as the name says, is a constant. Yeah? So that's for a zero order reaction. Zero order reaction, rate is constant. And we really have this equation here. Brilliant. Now, let's say, um, I'll do a slight modification of the whole procedure. Let's say I start with 100 assessments as before. I start at nine o'clock, and I finish at 1300 hours. So it's exactly the same as before. But this time I say I mark T 
10% of the scripts per hour. I mark 10% per hour. Before I told you, I mark 10 assessments per hour. Now I say I mark 10% per hour. How many scripts are there left at one o'clock? Is 10% not still 10 assessments? Mm, it's an interesting thought. Alessandro says 60. Mm -hmm. Is he right? Sixty, sixty, sixty. And let's just simply say we are going for whole assessments only. Let's do that together. So nine. 10, 11, 12, 1. At 9 o'clock, I have 100 assessments. So I mark 10%. So minus 10%. What is 10% 10 of 100? Ten. Okay, so minus ten. How many at ten? Absolutely right. I have hundred minus ten. I've got ninety scripts left at ten o'clock. Okay, now I mark 10% of 90 scripts. How much is 10% of 90? Aha, I've got nine. So how many scripts do I have left at 11 o'clock? Absolutely right, 81. Now I do 10% of 81, but I just do whole scripts. How much is 10% of say 80? Mm -hmm. So that would be 8.1, but we don't care about the point 0.1. So how many scripts have I got left by 12 o'clock? Ah, I've got, by 12 o'clock, I've got 73 scripts left. Last push. What's 10% of 73? So I would have seven left. Well, seven, seven point three actually, but I don't care about the point three in this case. I just go for whole scripts. 7.3. So by one o'clock, I have 73 minus seven. I've got 66 scripts left. Does that make sense?
Do you see the difference between this one here, where I said I can mark 10 per hour, 10 assessments per hour, and 10% per hour. Can you see this difference? In one case, when we had the zero order reaction, we calculated that we have 60 assessments left at one o'clock. Whereas in this case here, we have 66 assessments left. And of course, you have, in a way, you have now seen sort of this algorithm, how you can do it. And because I've chosen the numbers to be very easy, um, it was not terribly difficult to calculate that. But, you know, imagine the, we need to follow this over a long, long time period and the numbers are not that nice, it's getting a little bit of a pain. So wouldn't it be great have an equation like this, like we did for the first, for the zero order reaction, wouldn't it be superb if we could find an equation like this in this particular case? And that's what I'm going to show you in a sec. How we can derive that. First of all, let's write, and I deliberately uh, ignore your comment bar because that's exactly where we are going. Let's write the general rate law. We have dA over dt, that's our difference, equals minus k times a. And this time it is a to the power of m again. And in our particular case now, m equals one. This is also called a first order reaction. Okay, first order reaction. Remember, if m is zero, where is it? Oops, where m is zero, we have a zero order reaction. Here we have a first order reaction because m equals one. Right, so we can write dA over dt equals minus k times a. So in this case, the rate depends on a. As we have seen, the rate actually depends on the number of assessments that I still have to do. Hmm. Now we've got the a over d equals minus k times a. And for those of you who don't really want to know, you can switch off for the next three minutes or so. Oh, second order is easy. Don't you worry about that. Let me even write a one here. It doesn't do any harm. For the next three minutes, for those of you who don't want to know, you can switch off. For the rest, I show you actually how we can convert this into we can convert this into a proper equation. Because we have this dA over dt, very small changes. 
And this is actually, when you see something like that, does anyone know what this is called, this equation? What, uh, what such an equation is called? It would be a derivative, yes. And in this case, it would be a differential equation. So this is the typical example of a differential equation. And the way you deal with a differential equation is you separate the variables. Separate the variables. So in this case, What we do is we put everything with A to one side and everything that is not A to the other side. So A goes to that side and the DT goes to that side. And we would have DA over A equals minus K times DT. It's just a little bit of shuffling around. Or we can write this as 1 over a dA equals minus k times dt, like that. Right. Now, we know this is a differential equation. What is the inverse mathematical operation What is the inverse mathematical operation of differentiation? Thank you, Var. It's integration. Absolutely right. So what we can do is we can integrate both sides from our initial, which is zero, to our final. We can do this integration, and like with any operations that we need to do, we can do that. We need to do the integration for both sides. So we have integral of 1 over a dA equals integral of minus k dt. And to answer your question, Emily, no, you don't need how need to know how to do this integration because I know a lot of people haven't done that. That's why I said you can switch off for the next three or four minutes because uh, we will come up uh, with an equation. And integral just simply means we take sums. And I probably do a little video later on uh, why, what this actually means, this integral. So, the left hand, the right hand side, this part here, is fairly easy to solve because the solution to this integral would be minus k times t final minus t initial. If we've got t initial equals zero and t final here. That's on the right hand side. On the left hand side, however, this is a rather tricky integral. Does anyone know what the integral of one over a dA is? I know that some people have done that. Does anyone know what the integral of? Yes, great stuff. It is actually the integral is, the solution to this integral is ln, the natural logarithm of A. That's the solution. 
And because we integrate from t initial equals zero to our final time, we would have ln a final minus ln our starting equals minus k times t final minus t initial. And that was our right-hand side. This is now the equation put that here. This is the equation that is really the same, the analogon of the equation that we have done up here for our zero order. For our zero order, we don't need to bother about the ln. For the first order that we have here, we've got the ln z. And, of course, we can simplify that a little bit. We know that ln a final minus ln a initial, we can write this as ln a final over a initial, that's the law, the rules of logarithm, equals minus k times t final minus t initial. So that's basically exactly the same thing, just simplified this, uh, this term in the, in the red equation. It's exactly the same. It's just, you know, using that uh, and, and do the simplification. Now, of course, I know ln is not everybody's cup of tea. And sometimes we need to find this a final, and uh, it's difficult if there's an ln in it. What can we do in order to get rid of the ln? How can we avoid an ln? Log wouldn't help you. It is actually, you use Euler's number, you use, you take both sides E. And this E is 2.718, God knows what. You take the exponential. What do we get if we do both sides E? Because E and LN are the inverse mathematical operations. So we get e to the power of ln a final over a initial, that one was starting, equals e to the power of minus k t final minus t initial. Okay? Now e and ln cancel each other out. On the left-hand side, we have a final over a initial equals e to the minus k times t final minus t initial. Or if I want to find a final, I just bring the a initial to the other side and I've got a final equals, bring that to that side, a initial times e to the minus k t final minus t initial. But if you think about it, this is all just simply messing around with this top equation here, with this equation, is just a mod slight modification. And I haven't done anything terribly exciting. So if I remember this equation that I have here, 
uh, on, on top, this green equa equation, then all the other equations here basically follow, just simply from the rules of logarithm. So I don't need to learn anything if I just remember this top equation, the green equation, then the rest uh, is just simply uh, pedestrian algebra, if you like. Now let's see what this ln a final minus ln a initial equals minus k times, and instead of this t initial minus t final minus t initial, if we set our t initial is zero, because we just uh, set this as the, the start point, we can rearrange this a little bit and we can say ln a final equals minus k times t plus ln a initial. So we can say that, right? I just brought this to the other side. Nothing terribly exciting. But here is again something really exciting with this equation, the way I've written it. Can somebody see why it is exciting? What is exciting about this equation here? Yes, absolutely right, guys. Y equals mx plus c. Look at that. I would not necessarily simplify it any further. Uh, you might get a little bit into trouble. And actually, no, you can't simplify it any further because you've got the plus sign. You can't do anything uh, else with this equation, really. So it is the equation for a straight line. So how do we now plot this? On the x-axis, again, I plot my time. What do I plot on the y-axis? What do I plot on the y-axis? Yeah, absolutely. It has to have the y in it. Because all I have done from this equation here, from the, uh, from the green equation, I brought the ln a initial to the other side. So that is, that is this equation here, that's the green equation, and I brought the ln a initial to the other side. I plot the ln of the concentration. So I plot ln of a. Note, it is the ln that I plot, right? And no, it is not plus ai, because according to the rules of logarithm, I can put this ln, these two logarithms, into this part here, ln a final divided by ai. So what I can do now is I start here. And I go down with a straight line. What is this point here? This blob here, what is this? It's a negative gradient, absolutely right. But what is this blob? Thank you. Yes, a lot of students say it is AI, 
But no, it is actually ln of my starting point. Ln of my starting point. And the gradient here, this would be my negative k, the rate constant. Can, I've drawn it like that, can it go into the negative range? Can I draw it like that? Let me just see if I can get this nice as a straight line. Can it get into the negative range? Now it's not a negative time, the time is still positive. Hmm. Interesting answers. Interesting answers that you have. I tell you what. Hmm. Wav makes a very interesting suggestion here. Actually, let's do that tomorrow. Have a lovely day. Think about it. Can it go into the negative range? And hopefully I shall see you tomorrow. If you don't get the integration thing, don't worry about it. As long as you understand the two equations that I've shown you, you don't need to repeat the uh, integration thing. That was just for people who, who know about it. So thank you very much. And I shall see you tomorrow with the cliffhanger. And we will continue from that, uh, whether it can or cannot be negative and what it would actually mean. Have a beautiful day. Don't do anything I wouldn't do and enjoy life. Bye bye.